All right, guys, in this tutorial, I am going to show you how to recklessly abuse the operator matrix combined with the easy morph pad to not spend a lot of time in FM8 and get a really cool sound, hopefully a really cool sound. So you start with a preset, whatever preset you like. That's cool. Bellmaker. Bellmaker sounds good. Next thing you do is go to uh, easy morph. And it looks like they already have some modulation written into the Bellmaker patch. That's cool, but I really like release bells the best. So we click normalize timbers. Draw these down. And then we have the same thing everywhere. Now we go to this side, we go to the operator patch and we're gonna mess with these and get really harsh stuff. Use your ear. Stuff will sound interesting. Don't worry if it's too chaotic. That's what part of, that's part of the beast with FM synthesis. All right, that corner's done. Let's go to another corner. Back to the operator. Let's mess with waveforms. Random, seriously, just random. Going for speed. Move forward. This would be a mouse. That's something I would modulate my DAW. Cool. Moving right along. This time, let's invert some of the waveforms. Let's maybe mess with some of the offsets and change every other waveform. I haven't even listened yet. <laughs> Don't even know what's going to happen. And get rid of the panning. Let's send every operator out 100%. This could be crazy. What's sustaining? All right, A is problematic here to be sent out 100%. We'll just get rid of him. And let's send A into a bunch of stuff. And circle the feedback loop. Cool. That was quick, and now we can have fun. Now we have four, four different sounds. I didn't even rename them. Probably should rename them, you know, to something that isn't generic, like one, two, three, or four, and starts in a logical way where you can recreate it, but you know, whatever. Now we can morph. But I find that when I do it with my mouse, I don't know, it just doesn't sound good. This, of course, will increase the amount of seeds that are out there to catch random values. But whatever you leave these on, and I like a little, little target or something. I find this works so much better when it is moved not by my hand or my mouse, but by an LFO or something, or a modulation source. So what do we do? Press configure, we're, we're in live. I'm sure there's a way to do this in most DAWs, but press the thing that lets you choose what you map, 
move this thing in both directions, you see the X and Y both went up, then bring it back to zero, uncheck configure, make yourself an LFO, and one thing that I got going on is rack with three LFOs. So we can just be super efficient with our time. Of course, if we have RAM, it makes it go load faster. Great, now we have three identical LFOs here. And let's map one, to morph X. Oops, map one, to morph X. Map one, to morph Y. And press the play button. That triggers our LFO. We are not making sound because we're not playing any notes. I am not yet playing notes because I want to make some interesting movement. I want to think about the movement here. We're saving this LFO for something else. So as I raise the depth, it's going to spread out more. Maybe if I change and offset the rate of these, it creates a cool little pattern. You guys hear what's going on here. Set to move it around. And then what you might use a third LFO for is maybe moving one of these random values. Morph random Y. And I'll map it. Yeah. I'll make it fast. Or no, that's slow. I'll make it fast. Bring it down. You can smooth or jitter these values. And just change the offset to sort of move where the movement's happening. Once we got this, and maybe we just like the movement, we don't even like the patch. That's when we can go to another patch, and it continues the movement. Of course, if you didn't make it, it's hard to see what it's doing. turn off the LFO, see what it's doing. I guess it what it's doing. It's doing a million things. Well, yeah, probably a million things. see if I have any of my own patches with some big movement here now that we got this whole interesting routing going on. We're just having fun with sound design. Because it's supposed to be fun. Thank you. 
Spectro. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I like this. You can see what the mod is doing on the Spectro. Wonder if it's going to crap out on me. And randomize some of our values here. This might even just be a good thing to have going while you're already doing sound design. Of course, the right way to do this is to just capture all of this stuff. So you don't really even have to do your sound design, like program it all out in a whole sequence. You can just sort of go to audio preferences, record warp launch, or no, yeah, record warp launch and take off exclusive from ARM. You can arm your MIDI track and your sampling track. You press record. Go for it. See how we're capturing the audio now? Now we can just like get that movement going, do some weird sound design. Sky. Okay, go to filter. It's not like I'm I'm not really making a patch here. I'm just making interesting noise. And you can make yourself crazy doing this. You really don't need too much. Probably recorded too much there. Then then it's like we're done. We don't even need we don't even need this crazy weird preset with this crazy movement with six LFOs that we made. We just delete it. We watch our project resources go back down. And then we work with this piece of audio that's complex because it's got all this crazy modulation in it. I hope you've learned something today. Thanks for watching.